six months ago, who would have thought you'd be in this position now? Now it's all begun. You see the attention, you, you see the chat there. How are you feeling? Um, I, I have no words really, this is amazing. I'm truly blessed, I'm gonna say thanks to God, honestly, because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be coming here. My team as well. Woo! Literally, like, this is surreal. All of this, I mean, I've seen this place on TV, and now I'm here. Next to the champ, it's insane, so I'm truly blessed here. What gives this opportunity to step in the ring with before you play with it? What does that mean to you? I mean, it's amazing. It is, it's, it's history, isn't it? Really, it's, it's history. So, that's all I can really say. It's amazing. Lloyd, uh, you were introduced as you're one of the, the best fighters ever. We're in your gym. I think, I think we can say you're the best man to ever step between the ropes. Uh, you, you had an incredible undefeated career. Multiple world titles, an incredible business portfolio, an entrepreneur, and now we come to this. Uh, your first time uh, seeing Deji in the flesh, I believe. What do you make of this young man? Um, I'm just glad that we're able to come together and put another great event together. Um, first, I want to thank all the sponsors. We have so many, so many different sponsors that's working on this, on this event. We have so many people that's behind the scenes that's working on. You know this this crazy event. You know I've been here so many times, as far as doing big exhibitions, doing big fights. It's all about entertainment. And um, November 13th, entertainment, entertainment, entertainment. Um, we had a chance. I had a chance to uh, compete uh, over in uh, Abu Dhabi. It's both been in Dubai, so we competed in Abu Dhabi the last time. Um, we had you know, a little bump and roll, but we got it done. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that we're able to go back to the UAE and get the people excited. You know, I'm happy to be here again. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to have fun, I'm going to have fun, and the people from all around the world will be entertained. We can talk about your trips. I know you went to Africa earlier this year. You had a massive press conference. The reception to you was incredible. What did that experience mean to you? Um, Africa, the motherland. Um, one of the best places on earth. Um, it was great to go back to Africa. You know, I was able to travel to Africa. I've been to Africa so many different times. You know, it's the biggest continent in the world. So it's great to go, you know, go back to Africa, uh, go back to the motherland, shake hands, and people embrace you and show you so much love. And um, just in the UAE, just the love and, and just the atmosphere in the UAE is crazy. So. I'm pretty sure, and you know, a month from now, we're gonna go over there and give people what they want to see. And of course, you can see the fight live on the Zone pay per view. That deal has just been announced. Um, I'm gonna be there. Uh, I'm very privileged to be a part here of Global Titans, being part of the broadcast team for that. I can't wait. Uh, but, Rab, let's open up now the floor uh, to some questions from the press. Dante's Boxing Nation by way of Aki TV. Floyd, it was announced that you were coming out with a new documentary. Yes. Is your documentary, documentary going to uh, cover all the racial double standards you dealt with with HBO and everything uh, that got you to this point in your career? Well, I just want to just tell my story, get, a, get, a, get, a, get the people a chance to hear my story. A lot of times, you know, the people here just, you know, they hear what the media put out there or what the people want to say about Floyd Mayweather. Whereas they don't see the Floyd Mayweather that, that gives back. There's so many people that's in this gym, you know, that I've been there for. We're not just going to talk about financial. We're going to talk about just giving my time, being able to help fighters, teach fighters, um, getting my advice on, you know, how to move certain ways when you're trying to get into the sport of boxing and helping different media guys. A lot of times, you guys see me when I go out there and they say, well, why do I only do um, interviews with Fight Hype? You know, and it's not that I only do interviews with Fight Hype, it's that Fight Hype was a voice for me when we didn't have a voice. They were the first. So, and they had my back, you know, and anytime you have my back, I must, I'm loyal to, if you have my back, I have your back. Meaning, if you're loyal to me, I'm loyal to you. 
and there, there's no number that can be put on lo loyalty. Whereas <clears throat> my team that's here with me, everybody that's in this gym, you know, it's so many different familiar faces that I've been seeing for 26 years. And I will always be loyal to those that's, that's been loyal to me. So, you know, as far as my documentary that's coming out, you guys gonna see 26 years of behind the scenes footage that you guys have never seen. I remember when radio hosts and TV reporters were accusing you of ducking Shane Mosley, Baldwin, Hat, Canelo, Guerrero, and you fought all of them right after that. Is that also gonna be in your documentary? Well, I, I feel like the proof is in the pudding. I don't have to say, I don't have to say who I beat. You know, there's there's been so many great fighters out there, so many good fighters. All the guys that you named are, are hell of a fighters. You know, everything is about timing. Um, I wish me and Shane Mosley could have fought when he was undefeated, but it didn't happen. And even like with the Manny Pacquiao fight, you know, everything is about timing. And if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. And when it happened, I'm glad that it happened when it happened because it was worth it. And financially it was worth it. So, you know, I turned a, a fight I turned a fifty million dollar fight to a three hundred million dollar fight, so it was. I feel like it was worth it, in my opinion. Hey, I just want to ask, uh, what was your interest level, or uh, why did you select Benji, and what about him, or what about his social media following, uh, made this exhibition interesting for you? What the, what the, hello, hello. I'm sorry. Well, it's really not me. It's it's my team. It's communication. I got good communication with, with my team. Like I just spoke about when I first got up here. It's a lot of people that's behind the scenes that don't get the credit. You know, you have guys like Brett Johnson, um, James McNair, uh, AKA the Harlem Hot Boy, that's working every day, 24 hours a day. Even Al Heyman and Leonard Ellaby and you have so many different pieces to this puzzle that's working behind the scenes. And um, he has a huge following. Um, I got a huge following and it's all about excitement. So I'm pretty sure he's gonna bring excitement. I'm gonna bring excitement. So it's, a, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool for the UAE. At least I think so. You know, I know that these are exhibitions and, and you see them that way, but just me looking on the outside, I felt like your opponents, the last two Japanese opponents, they're going in, they're trying to rip your head off. Like, I feel yes. like they're approaching it like it's a real fight. Absolutely. So um, let me kind of explain to the, to everyone what happened in the last exhibition. So I, I came out there and I had to check the temperature. When you guys, when you guys like, what do you mean by check the temperature? I mean, I'm seeing what the guy is really on. So, you know, he shot a jab. I touched, I touched it with my glove. I saw he's trying to kill me. So I said, I've been here before because I got so much experience. So I didn't know what he wanted to do. I didn't know. I mean, sometimes you want me to carry the guy, I can carry a guy, but I can see this guy, he was upset. So I said, let me go ahead and give people what they want to see. How you doing, Floyd? Tony Morrow from the Combat Lounge, New Stitch Media, first time. Uh, what similarities are there in putting together exhibition events and professional boxing events and uh, what are the differences that what you would say that each one can learn from? Well, it's totally different. You know, when I'm going out there for a regular professional fight, you know, I can demand whatever I want to demand. Whereas the negotiation for an exhibition is a little bit different. You know, we can we can pick up we can pick up thirty, we can pick up we can pick up twenty, thirty million. We can pick up a few million, but when I'm fighting a regular fight, you know. Most, most, most likely there's always a high number. You know, you guys may see 50 million or 100 million on the check. So there's a, there's a difference, but it's, it's not really about the money. I'm enjoying myself. I'm able to stay in shape. And whereas with a professional fight, like when you're training for all the top guys, you have to work extremely, 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 extremely hard. And you have to, and you have to work out extremely a lot, meaning you have to do between five and eight mile runs. You have to uh, work out in the swimming pool. You have to chop wood. You have to do a lot of sparring. You have to do, I mean, it's, it takes a lot. A lot of bag work, um, hand specialists, 
um, Masu, it takes a lot for a fight that's at, at, at a crazy, crazy high magnitude, at, you know, with a super fight. But when it's an exhibition, you can come in the gym, you can work out, you can hit the bag, you can spar a little bit, you can do little light runs, you can have fun, you can travel the world and still do your do your workouts. And it's pretty cool. Whereas with, with boxing, when it's at when it's at the elite stage, you can't play games. Whereas with this, you can have a little bit, it's a little bit more fun and and more more you got a little you got a little bit more more time in your hands to have fun and travel the world and enjoy yourself. Well, um um Clarissa Shields. I'd like to say Clarissa Clarissa. Um, she's from Michigan, like myself. She's a native of Michigan, like myself. Um, Two-time gold medalist. We like to call her the uh, the female TBE in the sport of boxing. And just gonna give her a chance. Just gonna give this is gonna give her a chance to redeem her first loss. She only has one loss throughout her whole career, so um, I'm excited for her. And she, we work with the same trainer, um, uh, Gerald Tucker. Gerald Tucker. It's from the Mayweather Trilogy, the Mayweather School. So I'm looking forward to seeing Clarissa Shields this weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Deji, you hear Floyd talking about how he checks his opponent's temperature in these exhibitions. What's, what's your temperature going to be uh, in November 13th? Is it going to be 100 degrees? Or you gonna... <laughs> um, I guess uh, with this exhibition, I'm going to, I mean, I saw that Floyd said something about, you know, like easy picks or something like that. So I want to kind of show him that, you know, I can bring something to the table. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, Desi, I have a question, Reverend Ralph. Uh, Floyd, I'm not going to ask you any questions, man, because I see you all the time. I know what you do, man. So I'm going to ask Desi a question because I, I, I was actually really impressed. Uh, Congratulations on your on your social media platforms. It takes a lot. Us as entertainers, we actually have teams that do that stuff for us and for you guys to get those numbers. I mean, 11 million YouTube subscribers, 3 million uh, Instagram, that, that's, a, that's a lot of work. Um, but some of these fans in the US and some of the hardcore boxing fans are still trying to figure out what you're about. From your first fight to your last fight, there's such improvement there. It's almost like a whole nother person, right? Your team went on one of the podcasts uh, a couple days ago and said that that you were basically going to destroy Floyd. Okay. <laughs> now, now I'm just I'm just saying that because I mean it, it's good promotion, but in reality, you guys really, really have improved so much that you really you really believe and confident that you're you're going to go in there and give him a run for his money. At the end of the day, I'm just my first time here to have fun. I'm going to showcase some skills and uh, we'll see what happens. Really. We'll see what happens on the other team. Legacy. Legacy, yeah. Legacy. What do you ask for? Andrew. Well, you, well, a lot of times, and what Deji just said is, is correct. And I like his confidence. I like that after his first fight, that he didn't give up. He continued to work hard to get better, to improve. But a lot of times, we have guys on the side always saying this and saying that and, and speaking. Let him talk, please let him talk. Because Floyd Mayweather has been in 50 fights. And I didn't fought all around the I didn't fought all around the world and fought the biggest and the best and the strongest fighters that you can possibly fight. I didn't see it all. So a lot of times when we're up here on and, and it's our time to speak, let us speak, please. You know, I'm gonna let him speak respectfully, I'm gonna be a gentleman, and I I expect to get respect by letting me speak. Thank you. Floyd, well, I wanna uh, switch gears real quick, man. Uh, Javante said I'm not signed to a single soul. So is Tank now a free agent or is he still signed with Mayweather Promotions? Well, this is the Mayweather Deji press conference. So I'm here to talk about uh, Dubai. I'm here to talk about entertaining the people, having fun. And um, I'm not here to talk or talk disrespectful or bad about any fighter. Um, you know, they say America is the land of the free. You know, so we live, we love, and we keep striving each and every day. That's what life is about.
All right, now the two fighters, please, in front for a photo op. Wow. 